Uh, great news, despite the uh, horrible temperatures out for plants, botany is still continuing indoors in a miniature greenhouse. Uh, everyone shown previously on this channel is here, uh, for the most part. <laughs> but there's also a new newcomer that's the star of the show. It's this guy right here. This is a type of cycad. This is Cycus uh, repoluta. And uh, what cycads are, cycads are essentially um, a basal acrogymnosperm. And I'm saying acrogymnosperm because you've probably heard the term gymnosperm before. And uh, gymnosperms are essentially plants that have seeds and ovules. Those ovules, they're not covered by an ovary like you would see in a flowering plant. Uh, you can't really see in this specimen because it's very young, but if it was a girl, the uh, ovules would be hidden in there. But anyway, um, the reason why I'm using acro gymnosperm is because um, gymnosperm, gymnosperms are thought to like comprise a clade, but the problem is when you start including extinct gymnosperms, uh, it becomes apparent that uh, gymnospermae is a non-monophyletic group. It's paraphyletic because it turns out that some gymnosperms, particularly extinct ones, are um, more closely related to flowering plants than they are to other gymnosperms. And of course, flowering plants aren't included in gymnospermae, so it's paraphyletic. But I say acrogymnosperm because acrogymnospermae is the clade that includes all of the modern extant gymnosperms. Uh, it's essentially the least common, the um, most recent common ancestor of cycads and pine trees and all of its descendants. And of course, this cycad falls in that category and it's therefore an acrogymnosperm. And the monophyly of acrogymnospermae has been well supported, unlike just regular old gymnospermae. They've been around for about 300 million years. Their fossil record goes about as far back as the Permian and perhaps the Carboniferous. But despite that, you probably shouldn't think of them as living fossils, especially given the fact that uh, fossil representatives of the three modern families of cycads, despite having a common ancestor in the Paleozoic, uh, all of those families, as far as we know, seem to pop up in the fossil record somewhere like late in the Mesozoic or early in the Cenozoic, which is like <laughs> almost 200 million years afterwards, after their origination, their origin. So if you go into like some deeper taxonomy here, uh, we know this is... Uh, Psychus revoluta, because uh, in Psychus revoluta, an important thing you'll notice here on these uh, leaves, they have leaflets, and the leaflets, they're just on their own, and there's only a single midrib going down these leaflets, which is not what you see in a lot of other cycads, like uh, one of the cycads, Boenia, it has kind of thicker looking leaves. It's still pinnate like this. This is a pinnate re leaf arrangement. But still, uh, there's multiple veins, like secondary veins, going down those leaflets. But there's only one midrib right here. And you can see them right there. But also, we know that this is Psychus revoluta. Revoluta refers to the uh, recurving of the margins of the leaflet. And uh, it's a little tough to see. However, uh, it should be apparent in some of these. Yeah, you can see how it kind of forms like, it kind of looks like an upside down canoe. If you think about the uh, leaflets individually as like a larger thing, it kind of looks like a canoe turned upside down because the margins are recurved. And this is easier to see in like cross section pictures that are a bit closer up. But nonetheless, I hope it's obvious that these are still present in this case. So if you look a little further down here, uh, what's cool about this? These plants is that you can see growth occurring in the middle right here. There's a very small leaf right there. And if we kind of come at it at a different angle, you can see it kind of like it's a bit curvy looking. And that's because uh, cycad leaves grow by unfurling themselves like the fiddlehead on a fern. And with that in mind, it's important to know that although these are often mistaken for ferns or palms, uh, they're fundamentally quite different, and cycads are their own thing. Obviously, uh, ferns, 
they're not seed plants unlike cycads and palm trees and cycads are not flowering plants like palms another important thing to note as characteristic of uh cycas the genus and its relatives is that these leaflets are keeled on this leaf they're inserted on the rachis at a at quite a steep angle in some cases here's an instance of a less dramatic version you can see how they insert on the side of the rachis of this leaf too and again just for the sake of recollection again you can see the one midrib on these leaflets and also the revolute or recurved margins on the leaves as well. And I'll try to find a better example. It's just important to note a couple times just to allow easier memory of all this stuff in case you need to identify your own cycad in the future. This is not one to focus very well. Like I stated earlier, uh, cycads, their gymnosperms, their ovules are not covered by an ovary. And although we can't see it in this individual, uh, if we had a female cycus revoluta, we would be able to see, as long as it was like mature, we'd be able to see ovules attached to the megasporophylls in the middle of the plant. And those ovules, they'd be tomentous. They'd have a tomentum on them, but there wouldn't be anything surrounding it like an ovary. And that's the case for palm trees because palm trees although they do have coconuts and they kind of look like naked seeds that's actually a droop and droops are a type of fruit where you have like a fleshy outer part and then the inner part with the seed and the actual part that germinates into a new baby tree and uh, that's obviously not present in cycads um, and in the case with ferns ferns don't even make seeds so these are obviously as long as you have reproductive structures present, it's very easy to distinguish these cycads from things like palms and ferns. Although some ferns are, uh, cycads are rarely bipinnate, and I'm pretty sure they are never multipinnate. This is just uh, a single pinnate leaf arrangement. So anyway, if we look down here, you can see how these are kind of like where previous leaves used to be that have grown off. And you can see it uh, reaches down into the ground and it kind of looks a little stumpy. It kind of looks like a pineapple, but these are pachycol stems and these are stems that are just thick, short, and stout. And although they do have lignin in them, for as far as I can tell, it's mostly softer storage tissue that makes up that trunk. Another thing to note is uh, this arrangement that I have right here for growing the cycad. Uh, note how there is absolutely no standing water because uh, that will cause these things to rot. And uh, if you think of it this way, because they're gymnosperms, they're, as far as I can tell, their metabolism isn't as high as like angiosperms that grow really fast. These grow incredibly slowly. And uh, that obviously means that they're not going to be using the resources that you give them as quickly. So if there's stuff standing there more often, you're going to have things like bacteria and mold taking advantage of it before the plant can. And if those get out of control, that can kill your plant and make it rot. But speaking of slow growing, um, cycads in general, very slow growing. And based off of extrapolating how fast it takes for these leaves to grow and die and fall off, and based off of how many of these uh, scars are present. Uh, some scientists have found that some cycads are probably about one to 2,000 years old, which is incredibly old. But the unfortunate thing is because of how their stems are formed, in most cases at least, um, you can't really do any dendrochronology with them like you can with like more traditional trees like pines and oaks and stuff like that. Because there's obviously like, um, because of how that pachycol stem is formed, with these guys at least, uh, you can't be like drilling into the trunk of the plant and getting like growth rings because that's not how these grow. Also, the really fascinating thing about cycads is um, they do have 300 million years of earth history under their belt. And now they currently have a more reserved role in their ecosystems. 
but you have to understand that it's still a very important one because uh, the thing that cycads do, which is pretty nice, is that uh, they have a special kind of negatively geotrophic, geotrophic root called um, coralloid roots. And these roots uh, hold cyanobacteria that allow the fixation of nitrogen. I'm pretty sure cycads are also the only gymnosperms that fix nitrogen. And um, again, it's pretty rare for uh, cyanobacteria to be doing that job for them. And nitrogen fixation is essentially just taking uh, atmospheric nitrog nitrogen, which is like N2, and converting it into more usable forms of nitrogen, like nitrates and nitrites, uh, for other organisms to use or uh, for the cycad's own benefit, or the other plant, if it's a different type of plant. Because uh, correlated roots on cycads, they're negatively geotrophic. They actually go towards the surface of the soil, unlike normal roots that you would think of. So sometimes you can actually see them poking out of the ground. I don't think there are any instances here, but there are probably pictures of it that I could show. But anyway, that's like a basic rundown of what cycads are and how they work at like the most basic level. That could be summed up in a short little video like this. If you were to look at a cross section of a coralloid root in a cycad, you would actually notice that... Um, unlike a lot of other roots, there'd be like an additional band of tissue in that root that actually represent a specifically designated zone for those cyanobacteria to grow in. Unfortunately, I still can't find any evidence of a correlated root in this pot right here. I really don't want to dig around too much. That's probably not good for the plant, but um, trust me, they're down there. <laughs> There's probably instances of cycads. You can probably find pictures on the internet or just maybe one when you're out and about, depending on where you live, where you can see one of those correlated roots popping up. What's interesting about cycads is that, although they seem kind of like cast to the side in terms of what kind of plants are being talked about nowadays or are of interest to a lot of people, um, they have garnered a disproportionate amount of interest because not only have they been around on earth for an incredibly long amount of time, but they are very culturally and religiously significant to a lot of people in different areas of the world. Um, they have lots of different toxins, which means that it's important to make sure that local people and livestock aren't getting sick from ingesting these plants. And additionally, because they're already kind of rare, you're going to have lots of wealthy people trying to find all the different rare kinds of cycads in case they're interested in collecting them. <laughs> like me. <laughs> but with that combined with their important uh, ecological niche where they fix nitrogen despite being a gymnosperm, which is incredibly rare, um, their conservation is incredibly important. Um, a couple cycads are on the brink of extinction and several more of them have fewer than 100 left in the wild. Um, Cycus revoluta is of least concern. It's grown so often, like it's probably not gonna go extinct anytime soon. Um, which is why I'm interested, I was interested in cycads and I got this, but I would never get something that was like anywhere close to being on the ICUN red list or anything like that, or whatever it is for plants. Cause you can get all the interesting things that you want out of this cycad without it being like rare or endangered. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know that and they still take him out of the wild. But again, you have to make sure that you can find a way to emphasize the safety and longevity of this lineage. I will also say that it's, it would be really unfortunate and also telling of the kind of people that we are to allow the extinction and disappearance of a 300 million year old lineage off the face of the planet in a geological blink of an eye, which would be like decades or centuries. I find it incredibly unfortunate that that's like a risk at this point in time. <laughs> I feel like we could be doing a lot better instead of having to worry about something that's been okay for 250 million years or more. But anyway, uh, this was hopefully a long awaited update on all of these guys. Uh, these guys are actually doing pretty well too, just to you know sum this all up. Uh, I had to save one of these false bananas from the worst aphid outbreak I have ever seen in my life. I have never had more bugs on my fingers ever. 
and I'm outside a lot. And that's probably saying a lot because of the kind of YouTube videos I make, which, uh, you know, I'm actually very happy that I'm doing this. It's nice. I get to learn more things. I get to make sure I, you know, practice being articulate and well-spoken. And even then, like, I, like some, some of these videos, like they're two or three months old and they're probably already embarrassing to watch, but I really, like, I don't want to take them down at all because like the information that they have is still valuable and, uh, I don't know. It just represents improvement. I've been trying to do that this entire time. And it's nice. Oh, and also, you might have seen it, but uh, this lime is growing a incredibly large amount of flowers on it. Look at look how nice that is. You can tell it's getting to be more mature. It's not too small now. It's doing really well. And you're not going to have like tiny little ping pong ball sized limes on this thing anymore. With all that in mind, and hopefully some new uh, Cycad facts under your belt, some Cycad Botany 101 that you've just learned, uh, this has just been a little update about my little greenhouse home away from home that's also inside of a home. And uh, hopefully it was of use to you. Thank you.